Hello, my friends. I wanted to give you guys just a quick overview. What does it look like um, from start to finish to run a print on a Bamboo Lab printer? So I'll drop an STL file into the slicer. We'll export it. We'll watch it start and finish. Just to give you a quick kind of a workflow perspective. Um, I am running um, seven uh, Bamboo Lab printers total. Um, so I'll kind of give you an idea of what that's looked like from maybe a little bit of a farm perspective for printer management. So I just have two here, the X1 Carbon and the P1P. These are my kind of prototyping development printers. And then once I have a printer or, you know, once I have that file all figured out, that product finally developed, then I'll send it off to my two family members and they'll run it for me. So between the two of them, they have five other P1Ps. Um, and I'll show you, show you all that details here on the slicer. So uh, let's dive into the slicer and I'll show you what it looks like uh, to run a print from start to finish. All right, so I'll go ahead and click new project. Um, so again, the purpose of this video isn't to go over all the different slicer settings uh, that'll be covered in a different video. This is just to go over workflow. So, um, First, I think I'll, um, I'll kind, of, kind of cover a few basic things and then I'll actually send a print or a G code to the actual printer uh, through the cloud, which is uh, so nice. Um, and then we'll actually see what the printer does start to finish. So let's do a few preliminary things here first. So uh, like any other slicer, you can just go ahead and drop your STL file on there. Um, unlike any other slicer, however, as you can load up multiple plates. I think this is a really amazing tool that I haven't seen other slicers do. Um, I haven't sampled a ton of different slicers. I've used Kira uh, a lot over the last three years and just started using the Prusa slicer. Um, used that about, oh, probably about four or five months. Um, I have since sold my Prusas um, and took all that money and just bought more bamboos with it because I just love this so much. Uh, the slicer, I got to say, is just amazing. Um, it's got so many tools that are just, everything about the Bamboo Lab uh, products is just ahead of its time, I feel like. So um, real quick, um, I'll just show you this because you're probably curious about it. I can go into the device tab and I can check on one of my uh, prints right now. So these are all my printers here. Um, the only difference is is these five printers are at different locations. These three are in Hartford, these two in Random Lake, and then these two in West Bend, which is where I live. Uh, so I have Nebuchadnezzar <coughs> printing right now. Obviously, I'm a, <laughs> a Matrix fan. So I can go and check this one. And I have the printer right by me, but if I had it down in the basement or someone like that, I don't have to get up and go check on it. I can just check on the live view, see how it's doing. Um, usually I just check the first layer. If the first layer is good, we're, we're good to go. But um, obviously I can check the status. I can pause and stop it. I can turn the, the lamp on and off. Obviously it's, I got a lot of daylight coming through here, so that's fine. So um, I can change part cooling, whatnot. Um, so that's that's pretty cool. I can check the status of my different printers. Um, here's one that's off-site. Um, Dozer, he's in Hartford. Um, I think something might have happened with her internet. Maybe she got kicked off her Wi-Fi or something. But um, So this printer, or maybe it's just saying I can't connect to it. Um, so I can check the status. Even though these printers are on a different network in a different location, I can I can still check the status and it's telling me, hey, this is the part that we were printing and this was the status. It looked like, so it did say it ran out of filaments, but it looks like uh, she continued it. So now we're at 90%. So, yep, I can check the status. Um, I can still pause and stop and do all that stuff, but the reason why I have this printer at a different location is so that other, someone else can manage it for me. So. I, I never check in on them because they're supposed to be taking care of that for me. Um, the only thing is, so this status, all this information here, um, again, all this can be accessible on the, the app for Android and iPhone. Uh, really, really handy. It's actually called Bamboo Handy. It's a really great tool. Um, all this is available 
<coughs> um, off-site. Um, all this is sent through the cloud, so you can access it anywhere you want, except the live video. The live video um, I can't access because that is only accessible if I'm tapped into their local area network. And this is what it's telling me. Like, you can't see the live view because you're not on their, their Wi-Fi. Um, I don't need the monitor anyways because that's their job. But I can check the live view for my printers um, that are on my network. So kind of a quick uh, little sneak peek at that there. I'll just close these. Uh, so one thing that's amazing, I mean, the ability to send the G codes through the cloud and skip the whole SD card process is amazing. Um, I'm going to take it for granted really quick here, but man, I'm, I'm so done with that process. Um, and it's just, wow, I'm spoiled already. It's so nice to just be able to send these through the cloud. I have seen um, at least one video on YouTube where someone was saying that... It took forever. Um, I don't know. They're, they're still working on things. Um, I've never sent uh, a huge G code through the cloud. Um, usually I'm doing stuff like this, parts that are taking maybe three hours. I have some other parts that are, you know, two to three times this big. It never takes more than a minute, uh, usually less than that, to send to a printer. I'll show you that in a minute here. So, um, But I'm assuming that most of you guys, <coughs> excuse me, are probably doing this to probably offer 3D printing services. So, I mean, if you have multiple uh, files from clients, just drag a drop onto different uh, plates. And then what you can do is you can just select this plate. All right, let's slice it. And then I can go ahead and hit print and I can select what printer I want to send it to. So this one has already been sent to Nebuchadnezzar. He is printing that one. Um, I can go back to my other part I can go to prepare. Um, since this plate is sliced, it's going to, or since this plate is selected, it's going to slice this one. Then I can go ahead and take this one, and same thing. I can send it to a different printer. I can send this one to Morpheus, which I will do here in a minute. So the ability to just quickly select the different plates and export them to different printers. Um, just from a workflow standpoint is just remarkable. Um, the time savings, it's, it's so slick. Everything about the whole bamboo uh, kind of ecosystem, if you want to call that so far, um, it's just way ahead of its time and saving so much time skipping the SD card process. So really liking these plates. Um, if I want to, I can go ahead and save this as a, as a 3MF file. I'll go ahead and um, open one. Um, let's see, what do I want to do here? I'll skip that. Um, so I'll open up. Let's see, where is my exhaust adapters? I think it's this one, 3MF, all my reducers. So I have one file that has all the current parts that I have in production right now. Um, actually, these are all the different kind of parts. Yeah, all the different ones that I that I offer, that I sell, I have it in one file. So, um, <laughs> I, I got to say, I, I, there's been so many times where it's like, okay, I have this part, and then I print it, and then, okay, delete it, drag and drop a new STL onto it, and then maybe this one comes off the printer, and it didn't come out right. And so what do you got to do? You got to delete the part that's on the printer, um, and then drag and drop the STL file. So, I mean, if you're printing the same parts over and over and over again, like I am, you essentially never have to drag an STL file into your slicer ever again. Um, so I really like 3MF files. I like the ability to um, access these different plates. Um, really, really cool. So let's go ahead and go back to just our basic... Um, test piece that we'll do here. So um, I got my printers up here, uh, P1, P, X1 carbon. I'm going to send this one to the P1, P. I can select my different plates here. Uh, I have a high temp plate loaded up and then my uh, filament is going to be just a generic PETG and this is my slicer settings. Uh, this one actually, this tab. So I'll go ahead and hit slice. And let's go ahead and send this 
part to uh, this printer. Uh, you can skip bed leveling if you want. I usually just leave it on. So let's go ahead and send this to the printer. And then I'll go ahead and show you everything that the printer does start to finish. And this, I'll actually, I'm not gonna cut the video, I'm just gonna leave it here just to show you in real time how, how long it takes. Uh, so it sent it, and now it's downloading, and now the printer is already starting to uh, start its whole calibration routine. So let's jump to the printer and show you everything that it does start to finish. All right, so like most 3D printers, just gonna little, do a little bit of homing here. But unlike most 3D printers, this printer has a hopper in the back. Uh, most of us call it a poop chute. It's gonna purge out some filament. Um, and then it's gonna move over this little wiper thing to break it off. When it does that, it's gonna move this lever, which opens this flap and drops it out the back of the machine. So what we're gonna do now is make sure that the bottom of the nozzle is completely uh, clean of any filament residue, a few wipes, uh, but then it's really gonna get it clean here. It's gonna move it back and forth on the bed itself to kind of scrape off any filament that might be remaining because it uses the nozzle itself to do the bed leveling rather than a touch probe. So I think it takes 25 different uh, sample points on the bed and I really love this. I feel like it's more accurate and I've had perfect lines um, every print. Quick purge line, sorry for the lack of focus, and then we begin our print. Won't make you watch the whole print so we'll just jump to the end and that's it. Well hopefully that gives you a better idea of what it looks like um, if you're thinking about getting one of these machines to run uh, a job from start to finish and maybe a little bit of a, a printer management kind of a workflow as well too. So I'll talk about um, more details in future videos, more slicer settings, more comparisons, things like that. But just wanted to give you a quick kind of an overview for kind of a workflow perspective. So hopefully this video was uh, helpful to you and I'll catch you on the next one.